The Territory Judgment, also called a declaration, is a legal determination of a court that resolves legal uncertainty for the litigants, plaintiff and the defendant. It is a form of legally binding preventive by which a party involved in an actual or possible legal matter can ask a court to conclusively rule on and affirm the rights, duties, or obligations of one or more parties in a civil dispute. Of course, it can escalate it at an appeal level. Declaratory judgment can be based on contractual matters. That is where the term obligations come in, such as the rights and obligation of contract. Or this obligation can be synonymous with one's duties which will be based on a pre-existing language of a certain law. And rights could be anything based on the Constitution. An action for declaratory judgment can be filed separately in any court case, whereby you look at the civil cover sheet and they will usually have a specific box that you tick for it, or you can just generally file it. And then part of the relief is to request that the active judge declare something is right or wrong. For instance, in the case of freedom of information, whereby you are strategically doing certain things beforehand so that you can get as much as you can before actually suing so that you don't go through the scrutiny of delay of court cases and service of process and all the other underhanded things they will do. As we've shown in this patron post, there's six types of discovery. But then there's one extra one which you can do outside, which is the old Freedom of Information Act, which applies in a state and federal level also. And as far as I'm aware in a state level, don't know where you are located, but I'm certain the principles are the same. Very, very certain the principles are the same. Each Freedom of Information Act, if you weren't aware of it, has civil penalties, meaning if they don't abide by it, they're liable to give you some monies. Now, you know that the reason why you're doing that freedom of information request is to gather information against them, to sue them, which plan to make monies, I hope, through the case. And if not, that's fine also. But did you know in the process of you gathering the information before you sue them, you can also make money if they don't respond within a certain period of time? Most freedom of information requests on a state level has a limit of anywhere to 5 to 10 days. On the federal level, it's about 20 days, I believe. And if they refuse it, they have to give you a reason why. Some of these local municipalities don't even respond after five to seven days and they don't even give you any reason why. And if they don't give you any reason why, they have to request for an extension beyond those limitation of time as prescribed by the public act of your state or the legislative language on a federal level. You can sue these people and then part of the relief sought be that the acting judge declare that they violated the Freedom of Information Act and thus they give you some monies. And of course, if you've watched the video on equitable tolling, you're thinking, well, what if all of this Freedom of Information Act suit for them to give me what I need takes up all the time and the statute of limitation runs out? Well, I say go watch the video on equitable tolling. Declaratory judgment is generally considered a statutory remedy and not an equitable remedy. Statutory in the sense that it is based on the language of whatever it is that you're attempting to tell them, hey, declare this, and that was the example that was given. But each state legislature or a federal legislature, they don't want freedom of information and they don't abide by the specific period of time and then they owe you some monies and then you say, hey, declare this happened and give me this money. That's what it means by statutory remedy, because it's based on the state common law, aka okay, the statute, which is the after effect of the public law of the state, and not an equitable remedy in the United States. And it's thus not subject to equitable requirements, though there are analogies that can be found in the remedies granted for court of equity. A declaratory judgment does not by itself order any action by a party or imply damages or an injunction, although it may be accomplished by one 
or more other remedies. Again, a declaratory judgment does not bite, as you know that Freedom of Information Act is based on the First Amendment. See, this is what they mean when they tell you that the Constitution is not self-executed when it comes to certain things. If you say your right to information has been deterred or abrogated, well, what legislative language is there to enforce it? This is one of it. Most people just create speculations and say, if you don't do this, you pay me 500 bucks for each day, or you pay me 10,000 bucks for each day. Okay, cool. You can create that as a private contract when it comes to your personal affairs, where someone is now overreaching against you. When it comes to you going to them to say, hey, do this. Whenever they have a, quote, duty to do something, such as providing you a service, there's already legislative language involved in that. When it comes to you being left alone and they overreach, then you can begin to talk about your smack when it comes to holding them liable for certain things. In this case, at least 1,500 to 5K per occurrence. In assessing the civil liability defendant, so is the Freedom of Information. When it comes to right of association, it's tethered to the prohibition of free exercise thereof, free exercise of religion. In other words, if you have a religion, no one can stop you from exercising a freedom, such as compelling you to be part of a religious organization. No different than when they say, if you are Muslim, you can swear by the Quran if you're going to the Congress, being sworn into the Congress or any type of office. If you are not a Christian, you can swear by whatever you believe in. That's called right of association. That right arises vicariously from something else that it's tethered to called religion by way of the Congress not having the ability to prohibit the free exercise thereof. This inability to prohibit the free exercise of religion is called right of association. We went over that in one of the child support videos. Now in this case when it comes to freedom of information, remember we read here that freedom of information is the freedom of a person or people to publish like publication companies, newspaper, news reporter, and consumer information. When you read this first amendment where it says, Congress shall make no law respecting or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. This part where it says of the right to speak and right to publish under first amendment has been interpreted widely to protect individuals and society from government attempt to suppress ideas and information and to forbid government censorship of books, magazines, and newspapers as well as art, film, music, and materials on the internet. The Supreme Court and other courts have held conclusively that there is a First Amendment right to receive information. As a corollary to the right to speak. Let's repeat that again. The Supreme Court and other courts have held conclusively. To conclude something means to finalize. It's stamped. It's sealed. It is written in stone. That's what it is. There's no dispute about it. The Supreme Court and other courts have held according to the rule of evidence. We went over it so many times about what's admissible as evidence or not. But let's just show it again. According to the Federal Rules of Evidence, which exists on a state level also, it's Rule 902, official publication. Evidence that is self-authenticating. In the YouTube video, I went over the importance of attestation and how it's self-authenticating. See, there are many ways you can make something self-authenticating if you don't have some type of official item number five. Official publication, books, pamphlets, or other publication purporting to be issued by public authority. Item number five, official publication, rule 902, self-authentication on a state level, and they have their seal on it. They even certify it. I attest to the act, look at, man, look at this. You can use this on a court record. 
I attest to the accuracy and integrity of this document. They put their seal on it. And they signed it. Rule 902 on the state level. Item number five, official publication. Rule 902 on a federal level with the same exact heading. State level, Rule 902, self-authentication. Item number five, official publication, blah, blah, blah. 902, evidence that is self-authenticating. Item number five, official publication, blah, blah, blah. The same word for word verbiage. You wanna know why this is? It's called incorporation doctrine. And another video on that has been done on YouTube. See now why I tell you create trust, do this, do that? That makes you literally official. A body politic. Don't worry. If you don't get it, I'll keep explaining it in different ways and showing it different means and from different angles. One day you will. And if you already have, good. But move it on. The Supreme Court and other courts have held conclusively that there is a First Amendment right to receive information as a corollary to the right to speak. The complete 34-minute video, part one, is on the Patreon page. Take care. Best of luck.